Hey YouTube, Snuffy J here. So I wanted to do a little something special today and give you a behind the scenes tour of my latest big video, the Talking Heads medley. So if you have not seen it already, please go check it out. It's only seven minutes long, but it's, it's very dense. And if you are a Talking Heads fan, you will love all the music that's in it. And hopefully if you're not a Talking Heads fan, now you are because you enjoyed the video so much. So this took over a year to create with my friend, Jessica Gerhardt. We had ideas to collaborate back before the pandemic and then after you know some time went, then we, we finally got together in August of 2021 and started working on this initially very simple video to then being this crazy epic thing that I would consider to be the hardest video I've, I've attempted. This really was uh, a labor of love. There's one of the lines in this uh, song, the uh, never for money, always for love. And I would say that's very accurate for this video. Let's dive right into it. I wanna first show you the GarageBand file. So what we did was we initially just kind of came into this with uh, ukulele and ribbit tubes was the focus with her singing. There was a moment where I was maybe gonna add some gang vocals as well, but we nixed that. But you can see it's kind of pretty simple. We, we added a few layers of ukulele, a few layers of the tubes that kind of come in and out as they go. Percussion wise, we had a cajon, shaker, and Aaron's recorded bass for us. There was a, yeah, some like little synthesizer, Wurlitzer stuff going on. We tried a bunch of other things like melodica. I had like a fake drum kit for a little bit I was experimenting with, but ultimately we kind of kept it the acoustic route and have fun with that. Arrangement wise, we knew we wanted to do This Must Be The Place. That's I think Jessica's favorite song. I personally love Road To Nowhere. I just love that dum 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 kind of vibe to it. As we started diving into the music, we realized, oh, these would be really cool to stitch together. And my whole process is learn the song, find the key, and then to start plopping them where it feels authentic and finding segues where they, they work. And in this case, we even, um, we kind of gave it these headliners of the arrangement and could kind of move them. I don't know if I can do this right now, zoomed out, but you can actually even move them around in GarageBand. Yeah, so I can mix and match based on what we were kind of feeling in the moment and then went back and re-recorded things a little more seamlessly so that it was flowing well. We ended up actually cutting two songs, uh, Life During Wartime and Take Me To The River. We kept a little sliver of Take Me To The River for the outro credit scene. But here, if we want to listen to a little bit of it, this is, uh, again, rough, rough takes, but. Take Me to the River is what you hear in the outro. I think she, yeah, we, she, she was singing on it over those Take me to the river. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, we just realized it was too much, too long. It already is too long. <laughs> so we kind of clipped as we could uh, throughout this uh, medley as well. But that was kind of the scope of it. I don't think there's too much though as uh, other hidden secret things. I think the Wurlitzer is just very subtle in the background. You'd have to like listen very carefully to catch that, but I had fun recording that uh, a little more belated. If you have questions about audio or mix or anything like that, feel free to leave it in the comments, but I would say let's jump to the video. So we'll go to Final Cut. This ended up being the final project file. Initially, if you kind of look at this stack right over here, this is what the whole video initially looked like. Layers and layers of layer possibilities. Um, in this case, these are all the like green screen things that ended up being layered, but uh, my process for this was taking everything we recorded and just throw it into this and start to delete things that didn't really work. Kind of almost like a sculptor kind of excavating the the clay until I find the form within it. I don't always recommend that. Like my Daft Punk medley, I had a little more of a sense of the storyline. So it was just picking which angle that I liked the most. But in this case, it's just a bunch of us being goofy and silly and dancing around and doing crazy special effects that we just dreamt up in the moment. And to find the best place for that was really, uh, painstaking like second by second, even millisecond by millisecond process to find what worked where musically and energetically. Again, do not always recommend this, but it worked for this case. Let's go from the beginning and see what we have. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll interject right away to say we 
really kind of spitballed the process of this. We we were very inspired by source material of Talking Heads, like the Stop Making Sense tour footage is I think one of the best performances of all time. If you've never seen it, go check it out right now. Literally stop the video and go watch it. But Talking Heads in their like height did this performance where the stage was completely bare. David Byrne walks out with a cassette player and just hits play and then just starts bopping along and singing. And then it starts adding guitar and then they keep bringing more items and instruments and people and technicians out until it becomes this full fledged stage by the end of the concert. And they're doing like a full on rock concert. And it is so epic and so cool that all the little like segments within each song, we kind of are trying to pay homage to either the music video or that footage or sort of the vibe of Talking Heads. And so that's where we didn't really have a, like a sense of a story from the beginning to the end. And as I was editing this, I was like, okay, we can't just dive right into the, like us just dressed funny in front of a garage. We got to figure out what we're going on, what's going on here. So kind of did this little like rewind, zoom in thing, just to give you a sense of some of the other fun visuals that were going to happen to get you like intrigued and excited and curious about what was going to happen. So we get into the video, talking about stop yuking tubes. It's an homage to the stop making sense title of the video that uh, Jessica had that idea of mind. Um, oh, this, I will say off the bat too, we recorded all of this with this iPhone. I wanted to highlight the fact that anyone and everyone can make a video for themselves. And I put that as my challenge of how can we utilize my iPhone the most? So we did, you know, the time-lapse thing over time. We did the slow motion features. In this shot, we actually shot in 60 FPS at 4K because I knew I wanted to zoom out from our, like, you know, close up features at the beginning of this. That's my own restrictions. You can use whatever you want, but I, I, the goal was that if you're an aspiring budding video content creator, you literally can use your phone and it does a great job. Um, so, oh, costume wise, Jessica just had a bunch of these awesome clothes and we just went to town and found some fun, <laughs> fun layers of things. Uh, I've never worn something that was so fun and colorful like that, I would say, but uh, it was pretty cool. The dance we're doing is actually also source material. I, I know from the American Utopia musical, I'm assuming they've done it prior to that, but David Byrne and his backup dancers slash singers, they would do this little like routine uh in the show when they perform this live um as recently as now maybe you're a talking heads fan you can correct me where where they originally started this <laughs> but otherwise we just wanted to shoot around my house this is like inside and outside my place in sun valley that i, I no longer live at but cherished for a few years um piano yeah just being goofy Exploring, again, the process for editing this was going just like I had the whole bass line here. You can kind of see like I had the video underneath it. And then I just had a bunch of these various clips that I thought were interesting layered on top and then timed them to where I thought they could kind of interject. The editing wise, I wanted to highlight like the cool parts of the dance, but keep your eye invested when we cut away to other stuff. Obviously got to do a clones thing. This is classic, classic Snubby J work here. All I did was take two different clips of us sitting in chairs and moving around and then rotoscoped it out so that you could see all of us at once. Um, we did a variety of things. And again, I just kind of placed them where I thought worked well. And then we kind of cut that into the video at the appropriate times. If you are curious about more about clone effects, I have a whole video that you can check out that's all about how to clone yourself. Um, and I highly recommend checking that out. It's fun and entertaining too. Then we get into the song. Yeah, just more fun clips. We just had fun with this. Let's, let's, that's right, I appreciate you watching this even right now because like, it was just such a joy to make. <laughs> Swings. So this clip, the trampoline, what we did was we sped up the audio two times the speed and then played it back so that Jessica was singing like ultra fast. And then we shot that at the high, I guess, I think it was 60 FPS, maybe it was 120. I think it was 60 FPS. I think the final video of this was, yeah, 30, 30p, so. Um, that meant uh, that she, you know we could be jumping in slow motion, but her mouth moved in the normal uh, time with the song now. Um, so we just did a couple takes of us just jumping on the trampoline and uh, trading off like who was holding the uke, who was singing along. Got goofy and tried to make her fall off. 
It's just being artsy fartsy dramatic otherwise here. Playing with time for that. And then, what else? Yeah, clones. More slow mo. Got the little synthesizer in the background. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I haven't been to my house in a while. This is yeah. Again, living on a cruise ship, it's it's fun to see this this life again. Oh, here's a prime example of some of the nitty gritty stuff that I had to go back and fix. This was a clip that I again, assuming I was gonna be singing along, I originally literally am singing along here. You can see my mouth moving. And then I realized I didn't want that. And so I pulled from another clip and then I rotoscoped myself on top of myself so that I wasn't singing. <laughs> little little details that I went the extra mile to do. Yeah, so next song, Burning Down the House. This was fun because of the projections. So I'll stop it right here again to show you this project. Basically uh, around, May of 2021, I bought a projector because I wanted to experiment with doing some fun visuals with my music. I did a couple, if you follow me on TikTok, I did a couple TikTok lives where I just had some fractals in the background. And yeah, maybe I even have it. Yeah, these like fractals just playing in the background just while I was go, uh, playing live. Just experimenting. I just like the kind of synesthesia, uh, it's called, what is it? Synesthesia, where you see color or experience another sense with sound or otherwise. I just thought it was the coolest thing to have that going on. I was also inspired by Pomplamoose. They've done some videos in the past, like their video Kill the Radio Star, where they have a projector and then they're moving things all around and catching it just in time with the music and just experimenting with that. So that's what we did. We we actually got some random B-roll footage. I had some stuff on my computer, found some stuff online, and then added these little spotlight silhouette things for us. And then, yeah. And then basically just had a jump in time where we wanted the music. So we sang along with the track and just had it on loop until we got like a, a take we liked. So even that one, I can pull back to the video and show you. So it's basically just made like little spotlights for us this opening scene because I just wanted to kind of build upon itself. But it's the projector, it's not actually lights. Hence the fire, yeah. And we got a little more party going on. We got some of that other B-roll footage. Um, you can notice over Jessica's video, I was actually like flicking on and off a light on the side just to keep help reinforce it. <laughs> I love this, this little clip right here. I, I cherish so much. This was me kind of paying homage to the Pomplamoose thing, but um, this is where we're like wearing black hoods and we have like a piece of paper taped to our heads. So it's like we pre-recorded us lip syncing along and then, or just reacting and then had it lined up just so we could like get our faces not on our faces. We experimented with just putting it over our actual raw faces and realized that was uh, too freaky. Like seeing four eyes or just like our eyes close and the other eyes popping up. Um, I think we have a behind the scenes on uh, on Jessica's Instagram, but if not, I'll maybe try to overlay something. Um, the, the thing was still like, I had to add in like these color masks just to help make sure those colors pop. You can see the purple was actually kind of muted in the end and just, it was a little unfocused. So ended up adding a little mask to make it pop uh, on our faces a little bit more and give it that extra color. But it was just kind of a little passing little clip because it didn't actually look that great in the end. Still want to play around with it more. More projections. We use the manila folders in this case. fire extinguishers. She really wanted to play with a stapler, so I was like, yes, Jessica, let's play with a stapler. But yeah, here's another case too, just, uh, oh yeah, we even, oh, I can go back. I had this clip that was just bare that I, I was maybe like, oh, maybe we should have a little projections over it. So I kind of faked it for a moment in the editing process of adding these other trippy fractal things. I'll let you see it. Sorry, it's a little glitchy right now because it's not processed, but I ultimately realized it's just too busy. And as much as this already is, I realized we can just keep it simple and clean. So I ended up cutting that and just leaving it as is, but still added little shape masks, shape masks to help it pop. If I turn them on and off. Yeah, so you can see like color wise, it got a little funky, especially with the middle folders. I had to format each little mask 
to be help blended in the end. That's color correction. That's a whole nother thing. That'd be a whole separate video. And then, yeah, you can see there's a couple other alternate takes that I had layered here that ultimately were just like, nope. It was kind of the painstaking thing of just seeing what worked where as a final clip for each shot. That blackout versus this blackout versus this blackout. See if this... <laughs> fun options and then kind of play around until they found the one I like the most. It's like weird because it's not really telling a story, but it is telling like an energetic story. That's why I love music videos for that way. It's just interesting to see things moving with music. Anyways, next video, Psycho Killer. This one we also just shot in my room. It's literally just a black blanket that was on our wall that I pinned up and then we just got creative with lights. So I had a little LED light that I moved to one side and then moved to the other, changed the color tone of it a little bit. Um, and then did some, yeah, just experimented with effects within Final Cut. So for instance, this one I think was like a fractal uh, glass block where I just had, yeah, her hand reaching through and then had it move uh, the center from one corner to the other. I did this, I did this throughout the video too. I had this little like prism effect. It gives it that kind of green, red, blue split that I thought added just a texture, just as a transitional thing. Yeah. So fun fact about this, the ring light thing, we're, we didn't actually do this simultaneously. We I only have the one ring light. So we shot one and then added the other and I just kind of spliced it down the middle and put both simultaneously. Gave me more control too to like time it with head turns or looks or things. But uh, that's a little secret is we didn't actually do that at the same time. Excuse me. Uh, what else we got? Yeah. I really wanted to go like freaky deaky with this song and then she actually had me pull it back a little bit. I wonder if I have, is it under here, Psycho Killer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a test of this where I wanted her to like move the camera around and then have that delay thing to make it kind of spooky. I'll show you. But when we started messing around with it, it was like too scary. So I ended up, we just kind of simplified it and made it, uh, stylistically, I wanted it to be a little more horror, but it was just, it was too much. So we dialed it back. Uh, still use that trail effect, I think at times with the, like the hands here. Can't relax. Ooh, a little too long. Can't sleep. And then yeah, just play with layers, playing with the timing of it all. And then started with, com uh, com uh, compositing, I want to say composting, <laughs> it's important to do too, but now with videos of kind of making a mask out of it and then uh, blurring where, how transparent something was just so you could see the layers of it all. Um, I was kind of spinning the light around here as well. This was just me, again, messing around and exploring. I had no sense of what this was going to look like until I started putting it together. Even this one, I was, I was like, oh, what if we put them to the side and they kind of look like monocles or a bifocals, I guess. This was the hardest segment I would say to edit because there were just so many possibilities. I had things stacked up by like 15 layers to say, maybe this take, maybe this take, maybe not this take. And then it helped having Jessica because then she said, nope, that's too scary. And I'm like, great, all right, cut, done. <laughs> but you can still see there's some remnants of old layers down below. Yeah. playing around. Now the stop motion, and she was. Uh, so I will do, a, basically I realized this was too much for Final Cut to handle. Uh, I should probably just get a, a animation program, but how do I find this again? Because I think it was right here. Talk, talking about stop motion. This, yeah, you gotta have somebody helping you when you're doing stop motion, I, th I think, when you're in front of the camera. We ultimately, had quite, I, I had quite the hassle of trying to get it all retimed with our, our lips because, or her lips rather, and then my movements, because essentially I was just using my iPhone and just kind of hitting press and then telling her to move, press, tell her to move, like just taking a picture. But then sometimes the picture when she was lip syncing something slowly, I just kept getting this face and we needed more clarity of diction between that. And so I basically had to go through and go frame by frame and find which times her mouth lined up with what the words were and just went really slowly, just kind of scrubbing through. But uh, you can see each one is almost a different frame length too. Like this one has uh, five frames, this one has three, this one has four, and just really try to line it up with 
the music as best as I could. So, And then because we didn't have anyone helping us at this point, later her friend Erin did show up and very grateful because it made a huge difference. I ended up having to go again frame by frame and rotoscope out or just kind of fade between the two so you could see me sliding in as she's sliding out. Uh, Give me more control, especially for this next one with the tree. I had to, I, also like, I think my camera got moved. So then I was having to like reframe that a little bit differently, but there's a lot of forgiveness because it's stop motion and because there's like a feather between it to help. But you can kind of, if you pay attention to the people in the background, they just like randomly appear at times. <laughs> uh, here's another case where I really had to stretch the factory to help make sure that that lined up with the singing. And then mine faded over. And then this was tricky too, because then we just had Aaron kind of hitting the button while we scooch forward, scooch forward. And so there were some times my shot, like where I had my hand down. And so again, we had to move, if I remove this one, you can see like, I ended up having to kind of bounce between and find her mouth lined up the right place and then find my motion to line up smoothly as a, a moving forward. And this was inspired by the music video. They've got some stop motion in there, but my uncle, Steve, he used to make home videos with my mom of her just like sitting on the ground, pretending to drive a car just like this and then tell her, skip forward, skip forward, skip forward. So then it looks like she's just driving on the lawn. And I that was actually my inspiration for getting into video making in general. So uh, it's a little homage to that. It's being goofy. Yeah. And then this is the last shot of our day where I think we literally only got like one or two takes of this in there. And I was kind of upset because I would have loved to have another angle or different shot or whatever, but my phone was literally dying. I didn't bring my charger. I was dumb. And uh, this is all we could use. So basically did that. Oh, there was this alternate take after the stop motion of us together there. I <laughs> threw the ukulele at the camera as a potential transition. Didn't make the cut because you gotta make it work with the video. Um, so then we had this like long take and I just found that to be boring on its own. So let's, yeah, let's jump back to the video. So you can see that here. Spinning around. This is just the time-lapse feature and just moving around, skateboarding, being silly. Splice two clips there together. Just general meandering. And then, yeah, this was kind of fun and goofy. I basically, we moved ourselves around and then I did this compositing, not composting, compositing thing where it was kind of these ghosts kind of layered over each other and basically just layered them over and timed it differently just so that it kind of just showed up and then it looks like we're kind of looping around. I was inspired by the OK Go video and love for this one specifically. I think they were even wearing colorful jumpsuits in um, an Echo Park in their case, Echo Park Lake. Um, and then same here, we are just kind of rolling on the grass, but I wanted to stretch it longer. It was part of the thing just to fill the time. So it was just like layers, 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 rolling up and then rolling down together. And then the final one as well, just kind of moving all different directions and seeing how it can like get, get cool and layered. So if we go back to the video video, you can see it in action. And I can only imagine the amount of people that walked by just being like, what are these people doing? <laughs> Artists, <laughs> Los Angeles. We got this final shot of us jump in and we land into this green screen world of what, once in a lifetime. Once again, we just had a bunch of awesome, fun clips of us messing around on a green screen in my room. Uh, I wonder if I can even find that footage to show you. Yep, so you can see just Literally enough green screen to make it happen. You can see the debris on the sides. Just being, yeah. I was kind of flinging myself around at different points. <laughs> again, just being creative, experimenting. And basically my process for this was, again, I found all my favorite clips of this. I went through and just said, this is cool. This was cool. This was cool. Placed it all in there. And then just started to time it up with the music and say, oh, maybe we'll put that there. We'll pop that there. Got these fun clips of Jessica. I have this like weird fractal thing of my head, just layered, just little subtle details like that. 
Um, I will also point out the the background stuff was all found in other cool ways too. I wonder if I have that handy, maybe my finder. Yeah, projector footage, VFX. VFX, here we go. My my roommates were making stained glass stuff and I thought it was so cool to like get cl close up clips. So that's, that's my roommate Emily in the background just <laughs> helping me demonstrate this. But my friend Aaron Kreitz had these awesome things that I just basically held up to light and brought my camera in close and then was able to, if I crop that back. Wow, yeah, see this is, yeah, crazy. The amount of layers to this was just insane. That's why it took a year. It's because I was daunted and I just couldn't handle it. It was too much. It's too much. Come on, go away. There we go. Okay, so you can see this background thing was just originally a prism made of glass. If I get rid of all the layers, all the effects. Yeah. Just, just a little glass thing. And then I, oh, and then I pop up. But it, it basically added this kaleidoscope for each one. I just made a different one that I liked for it and then kind of moved around until it looked cool. I just wanted it to look cool. Yeah, my computer is going crazy right now because it's not rendered to do any of this. I even have it on proxy. Um, oh, so that's actually a good lesson right now, I'll say. If you've never heard of proxy in your video editor, it is very helpful because you can lower the quality of the video by like 50% or 25% to help your streamlining process for editing, make have it be faster. So but basically when you go to your footage, uh, if you need to edit in proxy, which I would recommend if you're editing in 4K or 8K, click on the video and then you right click it, transcode media, and you can say if you want it at 50%, 25%, and then when it comes time to exporting, then you go back to the view mode and switch it back to optimized original, and then it'll just pull up everything back to the original quality state and re-render it so you don't have to wait for every time you tweak one little thing for it to just take forever. So yeah, that's uh, a little behind the scenes of these little fractals and things. If I go back to the finder, I wonder if I can show you. Yeah, so here's some of the other examples. I had this green pyramid that my friend Aaron made. That was really cool. There was uh, yeah, the orange pyramid. Again, I just kind of held it up close and then moved it in enough that you couldn't tell what it was, but the essence of it was still there. Um, she had this like blue, blue glass thing. And then I remember there was like a spiral. Yeah, the spiral. This one I used just one time, but it was like kind of a cool rainbow thing when you, it was like a, a spin top thing that you like put on the ground and then could spin it. Uh, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out. That's the ticket. Yeah. How cool is that? I just love it. It's just fun. It's trippy. Uh, yeah, this marble thing that spins. There was a, oh, and then, yeah, it was at my other friend's place and he had this kaleidoscope and then move it different directions and then the little particles move it different direction and all the mirrors already naturally make it into a kaleidoscope. But I think I also then twisted it around in post is what I did. Yeah, let's watch, too much talking. Let's watch, watch this segment and you can see all the layers happening. Knowing all the features now, the green screen, the fractals, the special effects, the color balancing. Uh, again, I used the prism color effect here a couple times just to give it that 80s layer. Just being goofy, different clothes. We were inspired by the original video again of Once in a Lifetime with that televangelical like dressed up look and making gestures that were kind of just absurd. Yeah, I played around with like where some clips could pop up and move around, could mirror each other. Just doing some silly dancing. Yeah. If you have other questions about it, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, let's keep going. <laughs> and then this shoot was funny because it was a really hot day. And so we were actually sweating like crazy, hence the like fan. <laughs> But we wanted to have this final clip like out on a street. I thought it was the cool idea, but uh, that felt dangerous to do in LA. So we ended up going to this hill that's near my house and helping each other shoot the different things. There's a clip of me dragging it later. It was literally having to do that. That's that's my life with this Rim and Tubes instrument, having to drag it to a basketball game or to this corporate event or up a hill because I want to get a cool shot on top of a hill. <laughs> This clip I loved because 
I don't know if you can even tell, I, our shadows are doing something different than what our physical selves are doing. Basically, I spliced it right where the shadow ha hit us and had it so like the shadows were dancing, doing something else, and then we were moving else how as well. It's very subtle. There's our actual shadows. And then here it is with the dancing shadows. Yeah. And I forget the inspiration for that. We just kind of messed around and thought that it looked cool. I like shadow play. Some more time lapsey stuff. Just kind of scooch forward on our feet and just move forward with that. Got an overhead. This reminded me of my Defy music video when I was traveling across the country. A little overhead. More of the dancing shadows. And then sorry to kind of bring back the old clips. We saved like halfway through videotaping. We realized, I think it was during Psycho Killer? is when I realized, oh, we should maybe bring it all back in at the end when we're doing this little like encore of uh, Road to Nowhere. And so from that point onwards, we started to actually keep that in mind and try to record ourselves singing this song or playing along to the song dancing to, to kind of put it all together. But otherwise I took extra B-roll clips that I wasn't able to use earlier and just kind of placed it at the end saying, this is cool enough. I want to celebrate this thing we created, but we'll put it at the end. Um, so let's check it out. There's that spinning one in the background, the spinner. <laughs> yeah, like this ha 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 thing. Another just clones thing. Uh, but we thought of it again that day. I was like, oh yeah, let's incorporate this. I think even Psycho Killer we forgot to get. So this is an extra clip of her singing along after the fact. Uh, we got back into costume, put up the black screen and just had to redo it. And then I added these layers of the, the ring lights. So we got this clip of us outside. More of the cool class. Just a B-roll of us goofing around, laughing. I'll take me dragging the instrument. Music's building in the background. A little goofy moves. How serene. More of the dancing shadows. And then here we have the whole video in the background, re kind of moving itself backwards in time. Uh, if you look real closely, you can see all the same little things like the ring lights. Uh, the stop motion stuff and then we got this cool video of us doing this like exploding fire newspaper stuff so we use this i want to use this as the final clip in slow motion and then classic pan up to the sky and then the credits kept it simple i was gonna maybe throw in some outtakes but just at that point i was like let's just be done so yeah created by jessica myself audio mix by aaron they also did the bass for us Special thanks to all of y'all, Patreon people, including Jessica's Patreon folks. And that, my friends, is the video. If you enjoyed this and want to see more of these kind of things, uh, let me know. If you enjoyed this monster video and ra would rather see that than the little TikTok splice shorts, I can also make an effort to do more of these uh, in the future. What else? Go watch the original video again. If you loved it, please share it. We'd love to be able to let more Talking Heads fans see it. David Byrne himself. That'd be really cool. Let us know what you think in the comments and thank you so much. I'll see you guys again soon.